Now, we need to learn about this pros and cons of this technology because there's nothing perfect. There's always pros and cons, okay? So what's bad about this? What's good about this? What's good about this? Pros, it's full duplex. So if you are building an application that requires the server to send you updates, okay? You do not need to do polling essentially. And you do not need to ask the server, hey server, do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have this? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? You don't you don't have to do that. And that's you have to do that with HTTP with with HTTP because it's a request response system, right? Full duplex, on the other hand, you don't have to. Server can send you information, client can send you information, right? And you can build it for gaming and you can build really cool apps with this technology. It's HTTP compatible because of the upgrade header. Without that, proxies will fail, things can go bad, nobody can know this is actually a WebSocket, right? If you started just creating a socket, right, and, and sending binary information, the, the, the firewall start blocking because it's like, what the heck is this, right? What are you sending me, All right? But because it started with an upgrade, with a legit HTTP request, and then we upgraded it to a WebSocket, that kind of passes all the internet infrastructure and it will sh should should work with the with anything right there are problems there but we're going to talk about them <laughs> it's far more friendly because it's a standard it's HTTP. it's only 443 or 80 well you can listen on any other port and that's how http works right http web server you can listen to any port you want but usually it's just 40 if it's just uh, 40, <laughs> usually it's 80 when it's insecure, it's 443 when it's suck your, okay? And what else? Oh, we're already out of good things. <laughs> I can probably think of more good things, I just didn't add it. Cons! Proxying is very tricky, guys. Nginx just recently started adding this to to the to its uh, WebSocket support, right? It's it's real tricky to know that hey, you're 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 receiving a, a WebSocket request and you have to do like HTTP upgrade and the client the server has to respond to the HTTP upgrade, especially if it's the proxy is a layer seven proxy, because you know we talked about layer seven and layer four load balancing and proxying, guys. I'm gonna reference the video here. And what happens essentially with layer seven is proxy has to break the TLS, right? It has to terminate the TLS most of the time in order to look at the layer seven data, which is HTTP. And the moment it does that, it has to create its own TCP connection with the destination server. And God knows how you can handle this WebSocket and, and because there will be a bi-directional between the proxy and the server and then another bi-direction between the client and and the and the proxy is just a mess all right okay so i really recommend just doing a layer 4 load balancer or a proxy and just never worrying about it okay yeah layer 7 load balancing is very challenging dealing with timeouts because Proxy, HTTP or normally have a timeout, right? Server timeout, okay? But WebSockets shouldn't have timeouts because you're using the connection. Yes, of course, it's going to take a long time. It's going to stay open for a long time. Even if it's not used, you shouldn't terminate that for me because I can use it at any second, right? So timeout is, tr is tricky, right? And uh, you probably don't care about these things, but it's good to mention. It's a stateful protocol. Right, we talk, We saw this literally, this variable called connection. It is literally on my server. So if I sort of start my server, my connection is dead, the client is dead, and you just, you just lost the connection essentially, right? You have to reestablish that, okay? So it, since it's stateful, it's really hard to horizontally scale, okay? Does that mean you cannot horizontally scale? No, it does not mean that. You can write WebSockets in, you can persist the sockets. You can, you can write smart application to use a third, uh, like a serve, a database service, like a Postgres, to kind of persist the connection IDs and have numbers in them and then you read the connection and then you have to maintain the state in the database. And even if the database died, it will just 
if this uh, not the if the if the server died, it can read back all the connections from the database and do a smart thing and reestablish those right if you want to right. It's still it's still not easy. The client has to be written in a way to do the statelessness thing. Okay, it's not impossible, but it's very tricky. Okay.